If you don't get this right, you put all your hard work in off-season and contest prep at risk. I'm talking about peak week, when everything is on the line and why progressive linear load peaking may be the ultimate solution. Since we started using this method in 2019, 98% of our clients have made top five or better. That includes pro qualifiers and pro shows. I'm Chet Nichols, I'm an IFBB pro, judge, coach, and co-owner of USA Physique. Now it's peak week, the final week before the show, and everything is on the line. The peaking method you use is everything, and can be the difference between first place and third callouts. You've all heard the stories of how so many people miss their peak. Most of you probably experienced this. You looked fantastic right before peak week. Things were going good, then a few days into peak week, your gut tells you something's not right. Surely you should look better than this, but you've been told or read somewhere that's supposed to happen. Just trust the process. Show day comes, you feel weak, drained, and end up flat. Your muscles are gone and you can't even get a pump. Or you're smooth, maybe a little bit watery, and it's spilled. Either way, you've just missed your peak and we'll get it right next time. I got news for you. You didn't miss your peak. It was a flawed method. Now there are many methods that can be done and have been done throughout the years. Starting with conventional peaking, which is and should be outdated. Then you have front load and back load. They both do pretty good, but still have their risk. And then there is rapid back load peaking, which is a very risky but yields very good results, but only should be used with extreme levels of conditioning like women's and men's bodybuilding divisions. Other than Cliff Wilson, the creator of rapid back load peaking, has rarely this ever been mastered. There are other methods too, but it seems like there's always someone somewhere that has the magical solution to peaking doing weird shit that doesn't even make sense when in reality, simplicity wins all day long. Today we're discussing progressive linear load peaking. This concept was developed by Dr. Joe Klimczewski, we call him Dr. Joe, who changed the game once before when he started putting an end to the dangerous and ineffective method of water and sodium depletion. Progressive linear load, in my opinion, is a game changer. And if you're a competitor or even a coach, it would behoove you to learn more about this method. It isn't just effective, it is transformative. And again, I didn't come up with this. This is all Dr. Joe, but it is absolutely genius. And really, a combination of basic common sense and basic physiology. So let's dive in and find out why this strategy stands out. First things first, regardless of the peaking strategy, there are a few rules you should always follow. No change in food sources. Stick with the foods that you know won't cause digestive issues. You have to be shredded. If you're not lean enough, no peaking method can hide that. There's no magic solution. The goal of progressive linear load is to create an environment where we are slowly filling the muscles out as the week goes on. You should notice positive hormone changes and metabolism start to increase. Recovery improves, mentality improves, sleep improves, energy improves, and inflammation and water retention goes down. You just start to look and feel better while others feel like crap, like they're going through hell all week just beating themselves up. So how do we do this? Well, it starts with carbohydrates. So what is the role of carbohydrates? Well, for peaking purposes, carbs are a nutritional variable just like protein, fats, water, and sodium. Changing any of these variables can alter your physique in various ways. The leaner you are, the more sensitive to change you become. This creates an interesting dynamic which bears great attention. The more variables you change, the less predictable the outcome. The less variable you change, the more predictable the outcome. But back to carbs. Carbohydrates assimilate into glycogen, which is about two-thirds water, and are transported into the muscles. That, along with water, is what fills you out. A hydrated muscle is a full muscle. A dehydrated muscle is a flat muscle. It's actually pretty basic. Just because you're a bodybuilder doesn't mean the laws of physiology don't apply. As the week goes on, you are filling up a little bit more and a little bit more because we are progressively increasing glycogen and keeping you hydrated as the week goes on. 
we want to hit that glycogen ceiling somewhere around Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Friday, but we're preemptively creating a stable and predictable environment. One that is a constant upward trajectory of muscle fullness with tightness to follow. Our bodies respond favorably to subtle adjustments rather than aggressive ones. So once we hit your glycogen ceiling, we can hold that through show day. It's easier to do because we created that stability with those subtle adjustments throughout the week for this very purpose, which creates a more predictable situation. Let me give you an example. Let's say I have a bikini competitor whose normal carb intake has been about 80 grams. I may pull carbs back a little bit on Saturday and Sunday, then take her back to 80 grams of carbs on Monday. Tuesday, I may increase to 100 grams. If she drops weight, I may move to 130 grams on Wednesday. If she continues to drop weight, I may go up to 160 grams on Thursday. It all depends on what she looks like and what her weight is doing. Come Friday morning before the show, depending on what her weight does and what she looks like and what she feels like, I may have to pull carbs back a little bit to about 140 grams or move up further to 200 grams. Either way, it's still pretty subtle changes and I know what and how much to do based on previous observations of her. Now what about that digestion? Well, that's easier on digestion too. We're not trying to shovel a lot of food in the day or two before the show like what goes on in backloading. Now I'm not saying that backloading doesn't work and that it's bad. It most certainly can work. But timing is very important. And the way shows are run today, trying to time something is not a smart strategy. And if you carve up too much, you spill. Game over, man. For some, it's a shock to the gut. Yet people wonder why they are bloated and have issues when they do this method. But even if digestion is okay, and those carbs are not going to do much for you come show day, because there's not enough time. What does science tell us about this? Carbs take 24 to 48 hours to fully assimilate, which is one of the reasons why so many people look better the day or two after the show. Yeah, different things work for different people, but not outside the laws of human anatomy and physiology. Now, front loading can eliminate some of that problem. I had great success with front loading when I competed. This is where you start the week with high carbs, kind of finding that glycogen ceiling early on, to the point where you spill. Then you taper the carbs down for a few days to clean up that spill, only to increase carbs again, based on what you learned during the initial load to tighten you up back on show day. This does work pretty good and 95% of the time it'll get you there. But there is still some potential risk. You are increasing, then decreasing, then increasing again, sometimes four or five variables, which can create an unstable environment. We want stability here, predictability here and digestion can become unstable as well. Remember the goal is to keep variables limited and consistent as possible? Most of the time, if done correctly, and your coach knows what you're doing, it can come out pretty darn good. Lane Norton was my coach, and this was his go-to back then in the day, and he nailed it. That's how I won my IFBB Pro Card nine years ago. We know more now than we all knew back then, and compared to progressive linear load, Again, a little too much risk. Now let's talk about water and sodium. Frankly, this is a topic in and of itself, and I'm going to address this near in the future. But the main points are just basic physiology. A hydrated muscle is a full weight. 60 to 70% of our body's water is stored in the muscle tissue. Carbs and sodium are solutes. Solutes follow water into the muscles. Carbs become glycogen. Glycogen is two thirds water. Well, if you look at that list, that's a lot of need about a lot of water. It means if you pull water, you will pull more water out of the muscles than everywhere else in your body, leaving you flat, smooth, and soft. Certainly not full. I don't care how many carbs and sodium you have, without a fully hydrated muscle through adequate water consumption, you're not going to be full. Dr. Joe loves to use the balloon analogy. Is a balloon fuller and tighter with or without air? Now think of water instead of air and your muscles instead of a balloon. Kind of starting to make sense, isn't it? If you pull sodium, you're pulling a solute, a carrier of water into the muscles. If you've ever tried a sodium load before training, you should know that wicked pump I'm talking about and how vascular you are. If you've never tried that and are relatively healthy, 
Try loading a gram of sodium to your normal pre-workout meal about an hour and an hour and a half out of your workout. You'll know what I mean then. For those of you that have, you look that way because of all the blood volume that the sodium creates in the veins. And even though we don't need to be vascular for the stage, where are all those veins carrying all that blood volume and water to? I'll give you a tip, it's not under the skin. Now we come to the training. This is pretty straightforward. We start with the hardest workout on Mondays, usually the legs. That training is pretty much normal. I usually have my clients do what they normally do, just not go to failure. Tuesday is not much different, and usually the upper body. Again, we just don't go to failure. Maybe one or two reps of reserve at most. The rest of the week, we start to reduce the volume and intensity some. Nothing drastic, but noticeable. The competitors don't feel as worn out. They feel refreshed, start to feel a little recharged. But we still want to stimulate the muscles enough that the body signals glycogen flow into the muscles, but reduce enough to bring the soreness and inflammation down and the water retention down with it. And yeah, that means the day before the show. If the goal is to keep glycogen flowing into the muscles, why would you stop the one thing that does that the best, the day before the show? It's not enough to cause soreness, inflammation, or any water retention. In fact, keeping the blood flow up may even help improve those things. The bottom line, progressive linear load is actually pretty simple, highly effective, and with less risk. So what are the main points? Let's sum it up. Be shredded before peak week starts. Limit your variable changes. The more variables you change, the less predictable the outcome. Slowly increase carbs, maybe fats as well. Don't do depletion workouts once peak week starts. Instead, taper down workouts as the week goes on. Even do a light workout one day out. Don't deplete water or sodium. Food goes up during the week. Metabolism will increase. Energy will increase. Resulting in you looking better, feeling better, and performing better. That's exactly what our clients experience with progressive linear low peaking. All while others are starving, dehydrated, weak, feel like shit when our competitors are full, tight, hydrated, have energy, and can hold their poses on the stage all day long with comfort. It's a better all around experience and better results. There's nothing glamorous, magic, or sexy about the process. It's just simple. And if you're stage lean, it works with little to no risk. You're judged on how you look and present yourself on the stage. There are no points for the hardest prep, no honor for the most risky peak. But there is a win for the competitor who looks best on show day. That's a wrap on progressive linear low peaking. If you're looking to bring your best package to the stage with minimal risk, maximum control, give this method a try. Now don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your peak week strategies or questions. Stay pumped, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll keep breaking down what